Are you fixated on what's the fastest way you can get rich? Because if you are, you're going about this the wrong way. This mindset is a clear indicator that you don't have the foundation of financial intelligence and therefore probably why you haven't achieved the financial freedom you want. But that's why you're watching Millennial Money. Hi, I'm your host, Alexandra gonzalez Ganoza, and this is where your financial freedom begins. We're going to work on building your foundation of financial literacy so you can design your path to financial freedom. So first, let's start off with this. The question shouldn't be about how quickly you can become rich. It shouldn't even be about how much money you make. It's about how you can make money work for you. Like Robert Kiyosaki, right? He teaches that true wealth isn't about working for a paycheck. It's about creating cash flow and leveraging assets. But in order for you guys to do that, you need to truly understand the difference between assets and liabilities. Not just seeing it as some accounting term. No, you need to digest the concept of this. Knowing this opens up the doors to understanding how the wealthy move their money and what they focus on to keep generating more money. Robert Kiyosaki's Rich Dad has an incredible way of putting things in very simplistic terms. He's incredibly talented at that. And he describes an asset like this. An asset, whether you're working or not, is something that puts money in your pocket. Let's watch this clip so you guys start to understand the basics behind it. Back to the financial statement. Income, expense, asset, liability. So debt falls in here. So if you, let's say I'm gonna buy and everybody says, I'm going to buy a house. And everybody says, my house is an asset. That's not true. Your house is a liability. I don't care if you have no debt on it or not. A house is a liability. Same as if you have a car. A car is a liability. And the reason for that is, as we talked about earlier, the six words that are basics of financial education, financial intelligence, income, expense, asset, liability, and the two other words are cash flow. So when you look at the average person, they have a job, money comes in here, they pay for their house, and the money goes to a bank through a mortgage. So it's not an asset because the cash is flying, flowing out. So it's a liability. So the definition of liability, does it take money from your pocket? And for an asset, does it put money in your pocket? Guys, it's that simple. This is how the rich make money even while they're sleeping and how they keep getting richer. Even Kim said it before. This concept is what led her to find her first investment and then she just kept applying it over and over again, which scaled her from one property to 8,000 properties. Yes, finding the first investment takes, of course, a lot of studying, but once you nail the process, it's like clockwork. It's similar to learning how to ride a bike or, I don't know, making coffee for the first time. You know, you have to focus on pedaling, on balancing, on looking at the objects ahead, but then it's like clockwork, right? It's effortless. And so once you do it, you can do it multiple, you can do multiple things at once, right? Or even while you're sleeping, quite literally. So now let's figure out why the distinction between assets and liabilities is the most important lesson. Let me ask you this. If you stopped working today, meaning you stopped receiving a salary, from where would your money flow into your pocket? Would money even keep flowing into your pocket? Maybe you're thinking from nowhere or I'd have no money flowing in. And this is a reality for the majority. So let's change that. Here are some examples of the differences between assets and liabilities. Think of your dream location, maybe Hawaii, maybe Europe. Okay, so now picture that. And let's say you have an asset there and it's a rental property that gives you positive cash flow every month. It may be a business that you invested in that you're very passionate about. That gives you cash flow every year. Or it could be a stock, like let's say you really like Tesla 
and it pays you a dividend. The key here is that it's an investment where you receive money on a regular basis. It provides positive cash flow. To make this super simple, unless something is putting money in your pocket, it's not an asset, it's a liability. Contrary to an asset and in layman's terms, a liability is something that takes money from your pocket. So if you stopped working today, your car would take money from your pocket each month through car payments, gas, which we know is not cheap right now, and maintenance. Your home, contrary to popular belief, is not an asset, it's a liability. It would take money from you each month in the form of a mortgage payment, property taxes, insurance, and the upkeep that comes with the house. These all provide negative cash flow. If you look at the budget of a poor person or someone stuck in the middle class rat race, you'll see that it's full of liabilities and it has no assets. It's because a lot of people confuse assets and liabilities. The difference between an asset and a liability is best understood by looking at the pictures here. You see, there are six words that are basic to financial education and financial intelligence. Income, expenses, assets, and liabilities. And the other two words are cash flow. Here we can see the cash flow of the middle class versus the rich. So let's look at the average person, the middle class, and how their money moves. That's the chart on the left, right? They receive their paycheck, which, is, which falls under the income column. And then under liabilities, they have things like their house, a car, student loans, and then they pay their expenses, like their mortgage. So all their money goes to the bank. It's a liability for them, but an asset for the bank. But now on the right side, we see the patterns of a rich person and how their cash literally flows. They have rental properties under the asset column, which put money into their pocket, and that's how they make their income. And while the middle class use debt to create expenses, the rich understand the concept of assets and liability. They use debt to finance their assets. So debt just makes them richer instead of poorer. So very simply put, the rich don't work for money in the form of income like employees do. Rather, the rich invest their money in assets that put more money in their pockets, such as real estate, stocks, bonds, commodities, and notes, and intellectual property. So if you want financial freedom, true freedom, it's time to shift your focus. Pause the video now and draw your own cash flow pattern. Where does your income flow? Where does it come from? And where is it flowing to? Is it flowing to a liability or an asset? For example, the cash flow from my rental property pays for my expenses like things that I love to do, right? Traveling or getting my nails done like I did today. Or you know, Robert, he once wanted a Ferrari and we know that's a tremendous liability. But first he found an asset that could pay for this liability. Most people are taught to look at just their income, to get a job, work hard and work endlessly for a raise. Or if you work on an hourly basis, then you probably put in more hours or increase your hourly rate to make more money. The focus is always on income, income, income. So this is what's called ordinary earned income, increasing your salary, wages, or commission. The truth is, as long as you put your focus and attention there, you'll be working for that income your entire life. The lights come on when you realize that the key to financial well-being is not to focus on acquiring income, working longer hours, getting a second job, but instead focus on acquiring assets. The key to financial freedom is to focus on acquiring assets, more and more assets. You'll begin to ask the important and right question, not how fast can I get rich, but what new assets am I building today? This mindset will kick in once you focus on this. Once I got my first investment, I kept looking at where I could put my money to keep generating more money. Rather than seeing my money sit in the bank, I wanna see it cash flowing. If I see it just sitting there, it stresses me out and I need to figure out how to make money generate more money for me. It's a different way of looking at the world. How many times have you wanted something? Maybe it's a bigger house, a nicer car, a designer outfit or watch, 
or I don't know, one of my biggest pleasures in life is being able to treat my family members to things that they like or surprise them with gifts that they've been wanting or help them out when they actually really need it. But maybe you've told yourself, no, I can't have that or I can't do that because you can't afford it. Or perhaps you've consoled yourself with mediocre reminders that nobody gets everything that they want in life, which isn't true. Your reality can change. You can find a way to afford it. Or maybe you've prolonged your dreams and thought to yourself, maybe someday. It's this mentality that we're taught to just settle for a reality we don't want instead of finding a way to achieve that reality and living the life of our dreams. This is why I'm so passionate about this topic, because understanding how to utilize assets to your advantage can change all of that, just like it did for me and my family. For example, years ago, Kim Kiyosaki, she found something she really wanted. It was a beautiful 60 foot long sailboat, but there were two problems. Her and Robert did not have the money for it. And number two, they knew that owning a boat was a giant liability, or at least that's what they thought. But she really wanted this sailboat. So she began to do a bunch of research on ways that would allow them to purchase the boat and turn it into an asset. Instead of just letting it sit on a dock in Hawaii and writing checks out every month to pay for their maintenance and the loan on it, they put the boat into a charter company. When they're not enjoying the boat, it was chartered throughout the Hawaiian islands. And when they do want the boat, it's all theirs to enjoy. Now envision the income statement and the balance sheet. The cash flow from the charter business, the asset, pays for the expense of the boat. This is the beauty of assets and liabilities merging. When adjusting your mindset, keep the financial golden rule. Any money in the asset column stays in the asset column. Another rule to stick by, especially when looking at something fun like a sailboat, never say no. Instead, ask how. If you want a Ferrari, <laughs> maybe you Turo it and you start renting it, but then you enjoy it the weekends you want it. Maybe you love Italy, so you invest in a property there. That's something I would love to do because I've been wanting to visit Italy. And you have it rented, right? It cash flows, and then you get to visit your property, which by the way, that travel expense can then turn into a tax deduction since you have the property there. But I'll link that video that explains that in the description. By shifting your mindset from, I can't afford this, to how can I afford this, you can literally change your entire life. The liabilities you want can actually make you richer as you get creative with finding ways to afford them by creating or investing in cash flowing assets. The most important lesson to take from this video is the reason people get in trouble financially or never get ahead in life is that they have liabilities that they have been led to believe are assets, just like your house. Your house is not an asset, but we're taught that it is. Your house only takes money out of your pocket. One of the most important lessons you'll learn while strengthening your financial literacy is the difference between an asset and liability, like we've been talking about today. Once you've got that down, you'll realize that the strategy to achieve infinite wealth is when the cash flow coming in is equal to or greater than your monthly expenses. It's very simple. Stop focusing on income and start acquiring assets that give you cash flow. Wherever you put your time, your energy, and your focus will grow in your life, right? We all know that. So if you want to achieve your financial dreams, you want to put your time, energy, and focus on acquiring assets. Now that you know the fundamental difference between assets and liabilities, make a list of the assets you want and how you want to acquire them. Start studying them. Find out how to make them cash flow. This will help you create the life you were meant to live. The life you love because it is possible and because you can afford it. Today is the day your journey to financial freedom starts. Make sure to watch this next video where Robert Kiyosaki teaches you how the rich use debt to get richer. Thank you guys. Here's to a life full of assets.